Hey, what's up, comrades? Um, while I'm reading this selection, I'm also reading something good. Uh, the Dresden Files. It's something that I've kind of dipped my toe in on and off throughout my life. They had that TV show I, I liked. And then they had... I read, like, book six or seven at some point, just because I was I grabbed, like, a random book at a library and started reading it, not realizing it was part of this, like, <laughs> like 20-book series or something. 16 books? I don't know. It's like a light novel. So, um, so then I, I was at the library the other day here on post and they had like this area where people just like donate books and you can take those books they just, like a free book section like they have in those little like book kiosks on the side of the road i always like to check that stuff out because i used to have a decent sized library and then it got destroyed um it didn't really get destroyed i like when i left uh boston i was gonna like come back and get, pick up my stuff and then like my roommate like just threw it all away because he like moved back to Pittsburgh or something, which it is what it is. Like he had to do something with it. He wasn't going to stay there anymore and I wasn't there. So I'm no, uh, I'm not angry about it at all, to be completely honest. It's just, it's what it is. So, but that's like all the books I collected up to that point. And so I've been like slowly collecting them again. And then I've like donated books to libraries to on and off because I like to have space. So hopefully after we move again, we can actually build this thing back up. But, I've been slowly like regathering books and just keeping them because the army moves all my stuff. So if I just have stuff in a box, they'll move it to where I, I eventually end up. And then I can have my books. It'd be great. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, so I, I went there one day and they had like book one, three, five, six, and seven or something just for free. So I took them. And so then I was like, awesome. So then when I was in the field the other week uh, for like a month, I took the first book and I, I crushed it out. And it was very good. So let's talk about it. So what is Harry Dresden? Harry Dresden is... It's like a urban fantasy a situation, kind of like a Harry Potter, which people are more familiar with. It's more adult themed. Harry is a, he's not a private eye. He's like a wizard for hire and he does a lot of jobs for the Chicago Police Department's special investigation unit, which is ran by this chick. She's like a short blonde chick who's athletic. I'm trying to remember her name is Holly or Molly. I think it's Molly, um, who's kind of a firecracker and they um, they have like a back and forth. I don't know. There's like not really much romance in this. It's it's definitely a book for like thirty year old bros <laughs> to just be like, yeah, fucking magic, awesome, <laughs> while they're smoking a cigar and drinking a natty ice or something. <laughs> but the first book was pretty good. So there's like a council of wizards. And we learned throughout this book that Harry has kind of like a dark past. Like he was raised by a magician and his mom died when he was like young. And like a magician, like a like a fun magician, not like a wizard, like magic magician, like um, like the prestige kind of magician. And he went all around and then his dad died too. And then he got picked up because he had a lot of potential like magical energy. And so this like dark wizard like picked him up and like taught him how to use his magic I don't remember exactly what the story went, but eventually he killed that guy because that guy was going to, like, do dark magic or kill him, and it's, like, verboten to use magic to, like, hit, kill anyone. And so then he, he came on, like, he became, like, on the, um... He got on, like, the naughty list with the White Council, which is, like, the council that manages magic. And there's also, like, vampires and uh, werewolves in this world. And, and pixies and, like, the Fey Realm and probably some other stuff, too. We'll, I'm sure we'll get there eventually. I don't remember that much from the book I read. It was, like when I was a teenager or something, <clears throat> or maybe in college. But um, it was like, again, like it was like seven or eight or something. So anyway, so then Harry, he, um, he, uh, I think that's all the background. Oh yeah. So then he has this asshole. I don't know what his name is. Marshall. We'll, we'll call him Marshall. Um, he like is always ready to like execute um, Harry for like not using magic correctly and so there, there's that, right? So he has this kind of like sort of Damocles situation, like hanging over his head at all times. Anyway, and then he's just kind of like barely getting by because, you know, he's like a magician. So people don't, or he's like a magic, he's like a wizard. So the Chicago police hire him and then random people hire him to like do P private eye stuff. And so as the story goes, there's like a murder where people's hearts are like exploded out of their chest. And so they call Harry in and he's like, well, that's dark magic. And so he tries to figure out how the magic was cast so we can kind of figure that out. And then some other stuff happens. This woman hires him to find her husband, I think. And then he tracks this guy down to like this house up in like the cat, I, I don't know, the Chicago area, but somewhere by Lake Michigan or something. And 
they, he finds out there's like a pizza delivery and the pizza delivery guy was like, Hey man, I didn't see anything. So he's like, Oh, there's some stuff going on there. And then a pixie tells him some more stuff. <clears throat> and so he kind of put, starts to put together. Oh, and there's also, there's this Marcone who's like the mafia who, guy who like runs Chicago. He doesn't run it, run it, but he like is, he's in charge of like all the underground crime stuff. So he's, he plays like a prominent role. His character, like he, he threatens Harry because Harry's like getting involved with this. And I guess one of the guys who died was like one of his cronies. And then there's like this, this strip club, this bordello. It's not a strip club. It's a, this bordello that's ran by this vampire. And the girl was like one of her people. And there was like another one. And then he has some like back and forth with the other girl when he tracks her down. And he's like working for this other guy. And then you think that guy might be the evil magician who's doing this stuff or the evil wizard. But no, it's actually the guy that he was supposed to find in the first place. And you eventually figure out that like the woman who hired him was sent by her husband to like throw him off the trail. But he like calls her out on it and he has like, she has two kids and she's like freaked out by the husband. Cause he's doing all this like weird depraved, like sex shit to like get this dark magic energy. And he's also using like thunderstorms to draw energy from like the weather to explode people's hearts. And he's, he's starting to, he's, he's like created a drug that gets people like the third eye, which lets them kind of see the magical realm. You also find out that um, if you look a wizard in the eye, you both like make a connection and you can see into each other's souls, which comes up once. Oh, there's also this, this uh, hot chica who writes for like a, like a, like a magic supernatural kind of, you know, department store rag situation. And they almost hook up and then he, they get attacked by like a frog demon and Harry beats that thing. And then he eventually, you know, burns some bridges with uh, Molly but figures out everything that's going on. And so then he heads out and he takes care of like the guy by like burning his house down and getting him eaten by his own demons. And then he almost gets killed by Marshall, but then he is able to prove that like he like saved people from like the drug and the dark magic and all this stuff. And so then he gets like a verdict that he's like completely innocent and there's no more like sort of Damocles over him. And he's like, ah, it feels refreshing. But then, you know, he's burned all his bridges with, um, Molly in the police department so then and he scared off like the one chick that was kind of romantically interested in him well there were two and then the other one got her heart exploded so yeah it's kind of <laughs> so good stuff so we leave Harry essentially where we pick up on him he's just kind of hanging out he's a little better off he's not he doesn't have this like threat of looming death constantly but it was pretty good I like how it's written it's a first person style so we get his thoughts and we get what he's doing and how he takes on things. There's like this cute bar where all the wizards like go hang out and that's like hedge, hedge, made, hedge, with, hedge witches and stuff like that. Like people who aren't like really into magic but know like a little bit or people just familiar with the idea. And Harry hangs out there and the, the guy runs. It's pretty cool. Uh, the book is written pretty well. It's clearly someone's like first writing attempt because everything's very straightforward. Like there's not a lot of subtlety and kind of the mystery, it, it's not well hidden if you will like it starts off and stuff happens and you're like well it's obvious that person right um but the characters are interesting they have good interactions um they're really they're realistic enough there's a lot of like <laughs> the, there's a lot of like beating up on harry throughout the first book which is all right but it became almost like a little excessive as far as i was concerned but all in all i enjoyed it enough to buy the second book because i it didn't come in like the free collection for some reason and I started reading that, but yeah, it was pretty good. So that's a uh, Harry Dresden. That's uh, Dresden Files. Uh, what was the first book called? Eh, whatever. It's the first book. Coolio. Catch y'all later.